the next morning, William and Khaleesi wake up as usual, and as they get dressed and go to breakfast, a strange sensation starts to come over Khaleesi, to which she cannot explain. She tries to show uh, her usual happiness, but it is as if a sudden state of depression sets in. William tries to confide in her, but she seems to be at a loss for words. <clears throat> William then assures her that he will be back after learning, trying to learn of the Targaryen writings and the, uh, the laws that the Mother of Dragons enforces. With little words, she nods in agreement and William gently turns her head towards him and he kisses her on the lips and says, perhaps when I'm done with my two lessons, maybe we could talk. Maybe you could tell me what troubles you. She agrees to this. And so William goes off then to learn of the Targaryen writings. After some time uh, learning the writings, he takes a break and decides to wait on the laws because he is kind of disturbed by how she is acting right now. And so he is looks into a book of the histories of Targaryens and starts to learn a little more than what he was actually required. He learns about the dragons, their symbolism, and how Targaryens were at one point in time able to ride dragons. He finds this very fascinating and learns that there is a connection between the dragons and the Targaryens. Perhaps there is some, this could be some answer that he can, though he be human, use to confide in Khaleesi with and maybe learn of whatever is troubling her. So with having a dis discovery from reading a history book, he sets out and informs the those to teach the laws of the Mother of Dragons kingdom that he must postpone his lessons because of some great importance that has come up unexpectedly. They accept this and reschedule him for another time to take these lessons. William then asked to speak with Khaleesi, and she agrees, and they speak in private. William informs her that he took the extra liberty of learning about the history of the Targaryens and the connection between dragons, and asks if this has anything to do with the dragon she has. She then tells him, before you came into our world, I have always been known as the Mother of Dragons because I was born of fire and so were they. For the longest time, my reign has been sure, but the dragons have since then taken on a different, a different, um, attitude as if I have no control of them. The largest dragon has done some things that has brought sorrow to people who serve me and uh, are dedicated in um, supporting me. I could not, for some reason, put in control the largest dragon, but was able to chain the others. For a while, they were chained, and as you already know from the uh, time of past, there had been much treachery from these um, other people who would wear certain masks 
I had to make a point, and though I had regretted it later, um, had decided that perhaps this was not the best manner. They were, for a while, as they seemed to be calming down a little bit, I thought perhaps maybe I was having control of them again. When you arrived, they were set free for a while. But once again, they have taken on a different type of demeanor. And once again, I feel I have no control of them. And I do not know how, how to explain this. People will find this hard to believe that if I cannot control my dragons, then my power will have be diminished and they may choose to not follow me anymore because I will have lost the power of this control. And I feel that the claim for which I have is slipping from me. William then kind of puts his hand gently on hers. Khaleesi, would you please look at me? So she does. I cannot explain this right now because I'm only human. But... You came to my aid, and though I do not know if this was what transpired, but when I had been in this, what you call, state of sleep, it was the cool touch of your beautiful hands that I feel has pulled me out of this state of sleep. She smiles and takes that as a compliment. So... I believe it is my turn now to come to your aid, though we are not far apart as I was from you. I'm learning gradually that symbolism continuously has many meanings and is everything in your world. So while you are here and I'm not far from you, there are many ways for me to come to your aid. She is impressed because of the words of wisdom that William starts to speak. I would like a chance to find out how I may be able to help you. Will you permit me to do this, please? She with a smile then looks at him. Yes, I will allow this. If you think you can find the answer. Very well then. Um, I want you to take care of yourself. I love you very much. Do not let this trouble you. Perhaps I may learn of something in your world. I just have to seek the right answers to questions I now have. And um, I have to do, of course, the laws that you enforce. But once I have this lesson done, I will confide in someone uh, of the, uh, I believe it's your palace visionary, perhaps they may have, be able to give me the answers that I seek to help you out in this time that you're feeling now. I know Sansa, who is your appointed queen's hand, will be able to help you during difficult times on the throne until such time I find out what the symptom is and what the cure for this feeling that you have of what we call in my world depression. Once I find this out, I will discuss this with you and we can go from there. Does this kind of, I mean, do you kind of understand? Yes, I think so. And thank you for being so willing to come to my aid now. Well, I may be human, but I can't hide my feelings because obviously you know how I feel about you. Yes, William, you 
continue to amaze me still, and I love this about you, I will do my best to take care and hope that you will be able to find me some answers. I will. I will not fail you. And so with that, William kisses her gently on the lips for the longest time and assures her all will be well soon. And so with that, he goes to his next class, learning the laws of the Mother of Dragons. As William entered the classroom, um, or, or as he was heading off to get ready to enter the classroom, he heard, uh, heard his name being called, and he turned around to see who was calling him. Cleesey, um, in a somewhat fast pace, uh, not that it was an emergency, <clears throat> kind of walked fast a pace up to William, hugged him real quick, or at least threw her arms around him, and then surprised him, and they were kissing for the longest time. Then she had some additional information that she thought was very important for him to know. William, will you sit here with me for a moment? Yes, my queen. I will. And so they both sit on a bench in the palace hall. I forgot some important information. I feel it is important so you understand the whole story. Being the mother of dragons, I was born with th three dragons. I have, since then, though I didn't feel I had any control of the red and black dragon, who is kind of special to me, was able to learn to ride the red and black dragon. Really? Well, that's great! She seemed delighted that William was really impressed by this. Well, it was quite the sight. Although he wasn't exactly listening to me when we finally landed at our destination, we were under attack during a, uh, what we call a fighting pit, which I do not agree with anyway. Then the people with the masks attacked and were killing wildly men, women, children. They didn't care. Then they tried to attack my dragon as the dragon was attacking them with fire. I did what I could to save the dragon. And they had me and several people with me, including your best friend, who at that time did not know you because you were not in our world at the time, surrounded. The red and black dragon technically saved my life. Well, that's good. So, the depression of loss, as you might call it, is because the other two dragons are the other two that are a part of my having been born of fire. I see. So it's not the red and black dragon anymore that's causing you to feel this sense of loss. It's the second, middle one, and the youngest. The ones I presume might be females. Yes. I see. I thought it'd be important that I should tell you this. That is understandable. Well, as I said, I will continue to look for a way to help you. Okay. I do thank you, William. Not a problem, uh, Daenerys. And I've yet to see you ride a dragon, for I might actually start believing then that you are a goddess. <laughs> she starts laughing a bit. Well, William, that would be unusual. I've, you've never seen me ride a dragon. Perhaps one of these days you will. I haven't ridden one for a long time now, because I haven't had a need to. But I might, just might, one day decide to not hold back if you decide to call me a goddess. I don't know why I think about this. But it's because you have strange ways in complimenting a, a, a lady uh, of the house. And I've never been called a female god before. But... I may come to terms with this, but do you can do what you can, and I will continue in believing you. I will. You didn't let me down. Now it's my turn not to let you down, because I love you. I love you too, William. So they hug each other on the bench, kissing for the longest time. And then she gets ready to walk off to her duties, and William catches her by surprise, wrapping his arm around her waist. 
and as a surprise to cheer her up because she happens to be wearing a dress that has two black strings holding together and sticks his hand into her shirt and squeezing her breasts causing her nipples to get hard well him you know you're not supposed to do this in the hallway yes but i figured if it'll cheer you up a bit <laughs> it it does but um somebody might notice well i'll just tell him i'm checking your heart rate <laughs> um You've never checked my heart rate before, and I don't know if they'll believe that. Well, uh, I could be checking something else. Yes, I know, and they might find you checking other things that would be inappropriate. Well, sorry, I guess you're right, but I do love you. I love you too, Liam. You continue to surprise me still with the strange ways you continue to catch me off guard, but I do love this. And thank you for coming to my aid. As again, I said, I will do for you what you have done for me. And so they kiss for the longest time again, and they go to their separate ways. As William was going about getting information to find the answer to her state of what he calls, from his world, depression, some unexpected visitors that Daenerys didn't expect came into the throne room. My queen, this is a new precept for the faith of the seven. He has urgent business to speak with you. Unfortunately, I did not see this coming, and unfortunately it is out of my hands. And then he walks off. She looks kind of concerned. What is it that you wish to uh, present? First off, as before, you seem to be making a mistake. The marriage of whom you are with is illegitimate because he is not of pure blood. Do you not remember, since the time of Jon Snow, that he was not pure blood Targaryen? She seems concerned, and she realizes that he's right. And what is it that you would have me do? And then several, about three special uh, guards, knights, and enforcers takes their play a position. You will have to answer the charge for repeating this mistake again. She doesn't like the way she's being challenged. And then she looks to the one standing at her left, and suddenly a bunch of solid warriors come into the throne room I would say you're greatly outnumbered. Then her trusted advisor faces off the guard knight who then has his sword drawn. The palace guard faces off the enforcer, and his son faces off the other one. Do you think this is going to be a solution to violence? William then suddenly comes in. I've heard enough. And I think I have a solution. Daenerys looks so suddenly surprised uh, at William as he's now standing beside her. You do not belong here. The fact that you came into our world, unfortunately, is most unfortunate for you. Yet it is also most unfortunate for you to enter in the throne room disrespecting Queen Daenerys of the House of Targaryen. I think you have come in a disrespectful manner, and I would imagine, though she may correct me if I'm wrong, it's time for you to go. And I'm sure I can find a solution to the <clears throat> illegitimacy of our marriage, should one exist. She kind of looks down with a smile back at this priest. I think it's time for you to go. The uh, trusted advisor nods in agreement. I shall show them the way out the door. So with that, they can't do much more because they know they are outnumbered. And they don't say anything more. But as he is departing, he then looks back. This will have to be answered. She doesn't say anything as he's. they are all forced out of the throne room and to be escorted out of the city gates. 
about that time Darrow shows up. Well, I see I got here a little late for the excitement. And, um, you come at a not exactly a good time, Dario. Uh, yes. Um, is there something I can do for you? Well, I was hoping that we could maybe talk, so you know that I have no grievances against you, and perhaps, um, uh, we could get to know each other better. Just remember, Dario. If you two can't play nicely together, I will have to separa separate you two. But right now is not a good time because there are some things going on that I have to take care of. I understand. I have to go and take care of some things anyway. I should be back in, oh, probably a few days or so. Very well then. Sorry that this was not a good time. It is alright. Some other time then, William. I see you're doing your job well. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I suppose you're permitted to come back here. Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Well, then if she permits, then I have no problem with this. So with that, then, Dario bows respectfully and takes his leave. Then she looks at William, kind of sternly. Can I see you in the meeting room? Yes, I hope I haven't done anything wrong. No, but there are some things that you need to be aware of. So with that, William follows her. As she waits in the meeting room, she looks over to her left as William comes in. I have a solution about this illegitimacy, as I've already read part of it. You have? Well, is there a decree that could be made that changes this custom? Unfortunately, I am not able to do that, William, as much as it saddens me, because they are right. Well, you can may not have to make a decree, but didn't you approve my heraldry to sit at the right hand following in your stead, to which I would be allowed to make certain decrees? Yes. She seems a little bit intrigued now. What did you have in mind, William? Well, what if I made a decree? You, of course, I do acknowledge your authority, would merely just approve my decree. So, in a way, you didn't really make the decree I did. It is, though, your um, choice to approve it, and thus there is no illegitimacy, nor do you have anything to worry about. You continue to amaze me, William. You seem to be getting wiser every time with the strength after this veil of passing. Uh, is that so bad? No. I'd like to see this decree you have. Perhaps then it will end that situation once and for all. Very good, then. I shall have this presented to you soon. I look forward to this. Um, you said you also wanted to talk to me about something. Yes. There's a little more to the story about my dragons that you don't know. Would you mind sitting while I explain this to you? All right. When I was born of fire, um because my first husband, Cal Drogo, had passed on, and of course, a sorcerer's head lied to me about being able to cure him. And of course, you already know from history that I took her life, burnt at the stake, while I tried to give up my life to be with um, my first husband, Cal Drogo. I had three eggs. They were the original eggs, and they hatched, and they grew after I survived this fire. And I have been through a fire again when I was also captured by Dothraki. Then she sits down, continuing to explain. And again, I survived the walk of fire. But there was also a great war. War we called of the winter coming of the White Walkers. I have heard of this, 
well, it's a long story, but the first dragon had gotten killed and became like those of the White Walkers. The second was injured, and eventually I had to defeat the first dragon. The second one didn't survive, only but uh, sometime after the Great War of the White Walkers. The third, unfortunately, had also perished because it had accidentally ignited green fire. And it was also the last time I saw Jon Snow, who was the king, last king of the North. I see. So, where did these dragons come from? She gets back up again. The one you saw in the red robe at the time when you walked the coals of fire, and also who was in the throne room moments ago. Their history is unique and of their own. They are a secret society, as you well know. And when they had brought me back from what would be considered the abyss, they had found additional eggs. Not the same as the ones I had before. I see. They brought me back, and I was very angry. And one had been selected by the ritual as I came back from the spirit world. I was very angered, not knowing what I was doing, and took the life of one of them who was chosen by ritual because he had to do something special to bring me back. I had injuries, of course, to my face. I do not look like I did then, but you probably would not know this because you were not here in our world. I had another look, much different than you see me now. You would have thought of me as much younger I see. Well, you still look beautiful. <laughs> yes, fine. Well, thank you. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, these t eggs did hatch in time, and they grew up, and eventually, t as time went by, I was to take the th Iron Throne of Swords for the realm of the kingdom, and my one and only child I had again, Jane Aries. Um, but because she was born of Jon Snow, who has risen from the dead, which I did not know at that time, was by a woman in red, a sorceress. Um, I had to disown her, or the child's life, my second, would have forfeited her life she was stripped of land and titles, and I was to disown her for all time, though it was very sad for me to do so. I then was escorted back to ships where I had to walk what would be considered the Trip of Tears, and I felt that, that my coming back was nothing but sadness. I would have been better off left in the spirit world. The visionary told me of your coming. Anyway, you know the rest of the story of how you're here, or what we believe to be a reason for being here, and so... These dragons are not the originals. Alright. Well, that's fine. I just thought you should know this, William, because... Um... People might get confused that if my original dragons were perished, how can I have three dragons? Well, I am, I understand, and it makes sense to me. But I thank you for explaining this to me. So, you then have lost really nothing. You're still the mother of dragons. Yes, that is true. But again, they're taking a... Um, kind of like my originals. Um... Taking on a, a different type of, I don't know, like uncontrollable mood because of the ones that came from the unknown world threatening to kill them if I did not keep them chained. 
have they been around? I have not seen them. Then I'm thinking that perhaps keeping them chained up, at least in my world, I always believe, what is born wild or free should be remain free. It would be no different than enslaving dragons, would it not? Yes, you could be right. And you are the breaker of chains, as I've heard. Yes. Well, I'm going to find the solutions to, for you. And I do thank you for giving me the additional information I didn't know. Perhaps this will help me with getting the answer you, I, I seek to give you. Well, thank you, William. And I also look forward to this written solution of the illegitimacy claim that... Unfortunately, I do have to acknowledge it's true, because you're not Targaryen, not pure blood. I would have seen this before, but because you are not like anyone of this world, being married to a human is historical, and it still will be, as long as, well, I can't tell you what to do, because you are the queen, but again, as you cannot make the decree because of the custom of having to marry a pure blood Targaryen, yet you approve my heraldry to sit in the right hand following in your stead, which includes making certain decrees with your approval. Technically, you would be, as we humans would say, off the hook, not held responsible for such a decree because it will be me who made the decree. <laughs> she has a smile again. I like the way you think. I look forward to this decree, William. And so with that, he humbly bows and takes his leave. William, uh, prior to going to the uh, Khaleesi with the information and answers that he sought to give her some relief, then enters the uh, next class regarding the laws that Khaleesi, mother of dragons, enforces. Khaleesi is present because it is also her duty to accept a signature from William that he then is no longer considered to be naive of the laws and that since she cannot show favoritism, even if it be her own husband king, that he is bound by the laws for which he will then understand. All right, William, these are the laws that Khaleesi here Daenerys Targaryen enforces of her ruling. You understand that once you have read and understood the laws, no favoritism, even if you are her husband king, can be given. So any laws that you violate, you would be held the same as anyone else who has violated these laws. You understand? Yes. All right, then. Um... These are going to be known as the laws of gods and men. Equal justice for injustice. Please explain what you have. Uh, or I'll go ahead and read this to you. <clears throat> and upon learning this, basically you don't have to actually do anything. But once you understand this, you are required to give a signature. You understand? Yes. All right. Equal justice for injustice. Women and children who are needlessly executed, tortured, or crucified shall be treated and executed in the same manner. Trickery, deception, and spies. Those who use trickery, deception, and having been proven a spy shall be hanged for not more than three days or till dead. Protection of prisoners do fair trial. Anyone who oversteps authority and kills a prisoner, thus denying them a fair trial, shall also be denied a fair trial and be executed by beheading. Speaking with forked tongue. Those who speak ill towards the Supreme Queen show no respect or loyalty to a queen who has rightful claim and ruling of a people. Thus they shall lose their tongue threatening a supreme ruler.
those who threaten either by gesture, words, or deeds and action shall immediately be executed where they stand. Barbarism and slaughter of servants, commoners, and warriors. Those who act in such a barbaric way of ambush, murder, and treachery shall be hunted down and executed. Those who represent a family household shall be rounded up and tried till such time they are proven innocent. Sorcery and Arts of Magic Anyone who use sorcery or forms of magic to which serves evil or deception shall be tested. Failing the test, unless proven beyond doubt that they cannot be trusted, based on any said crimes committed against the innocence of blood, shall be put to death by being burned at the stake. Assaulting a Queen While with Child Anyone who assaults a queen, such as rude behavior in which shoving past, pushing, or knocking down a queen, shall be banished from the kingdom. Anyone who uses sorcery and kills a newborn heir to the throne shall lose their life by being burned at the stake. Betrayal of Trust and Confidence of Secrets Anyone who betrays a king or queen trust and confidence of information to anyone of the outside kingdom of the house of Targaryen shall be given a time of not more than that of the setting sun prior to nightfall to vacate and be banished forthwith from the kingdom. If the one who is found guilty of this fails to leave, then by the next morning they shall be tried the same as those who has committed treason. Rights of Royal Marriage Any heir of the throne to the realm of the kingdoms, especially a female, may make their rightful claim if no brother or male is available to make this claim. However, their ruling has minor limitations to where they cannot crown themselves and thus a priest lord must approve of any newly made crown to use at a coronation of an heir to the throne. Royal Symbols and Wedding Processionals The police lord is considered exempt on certain rulings and is to be given highest respect as they shall oversee and many any marry any of royal lineage to a suitor or of a male chosen by an heir of lineage who is of the descent of the dragon realm, House of Targaryen. Processionals and symbolic gifts used during such wedding ceremonies must be first approved by the priest lord. Visionaries Exceptions Only priest lords and those known to be visionaries with the gift of foresight or of post-sight, which is that which has passed, usually of those with special investigative skills using visions of what has been passed, are exempt from certain rulings of anyone who is a supreme ruler. All other laws, however, shall be enforced to which the priest lord and those mentioned herein must abide by and show obedience to the supreme ruler. Traditions of Marriage for House of Targaryen Any male may choose their mate to whom they may court and marry. However, any female who is an heir or by rightful claim, and if pro proven further, is of the lineage to that with the legends of dragons, have the right to choose the male of whom they shall marry. If the male does not court with honors and respect to the supreme heir or ruler, being a female, then the female ruler may choose her mate as a suitor and thus become a prospect to which she shall ask him to marry. Ruling Authority Tradition If a queen, being of pure blood of the house of Targaryen, has lived a long life without any forms of treachery, palace being attacked and overrun, or any other form of battle that is life-threatening, and the life flame eventually is extinguished, the chosen suitor, who is chosen by the queen as the husband king, may take the throne to which she has rightful claim. However, as the tradition of the House of Targaryen, the firstborn child, be it a male or female, has by all rights legal claim to the throne. Once they are well trained and educated in the Targaryen way, 
and after having reached the proper age to which they are to make the rightful claim. Thus the widow husband king must step down and yet be a guardian to advise the rightful firstborn child so that they rule well in the days of their rightful inheritance of the throne. Ruling Authority Custom a queen of pure bloodline of the house of Targaryen, especially of one who is connected by the traditions of dragons, is to sit at the right hand of the ruling queen, following in her stead much like that of a queen of any lower-ranking kingdom of the realm. Fallen Heroes and Warriors Any who serve the queen of rulership and has fallen in battle, or by such means of corruption, trickery, sorcery, or deception of any means shall be given full honors and respect as is the custom for their lineage at the time of their service to the queen is extinguished. Rites of Passage of a King or Queen Anyone who is a pure bloodline of the house of Targaryen, once their life flame has naturally been extinguished, shall have the rites of passage. This right is exercised by the right of cremation in a royal and formal ceremony to which they are placed on a constructed bed of sticks and straw and thus cremated. The ashes then are to be gathered and taken to a high mountain so that symbolically, as the ashes are poured out, the ashes are carried out by a strong wind, thus symbolizing that their spirit may enter the next realm of the spirit world as though they are flying by a spiritual dragon. The exception to this, though, legendary, is that this rite of passage can be forfeited should the king, queen or king marry anyone who is not of pure blood of the house of Targaryen. Thus a special sarcophagus shall be made or the king or queen to be laid to rest under that which is their palace. The one who is betrothed to the king or queen and is not of Targaryen blood line shall be laid to rest in a separate sarcophagus next to the king or queen who is of the royal pure bloodline of Targaryen. Heraldry Lessons Restrictions Only the heir to the throne, who is either a pure bloodline of the house of Targaryen, or whom is at least one half Targaryen, may view and learn of the Targaryen traditions, customs, and laws, as it is connected to the legend of dragons. Dragon Eggs Only the queen may possess dragon eggs in accordance to customs and traditions. A brother husband, or a pure bloodline, may present these gifts to that of a prospective female heir. The male is given one egg, while the female may have three eggs. Do you understand all the rulings thus far? Yes, Lord Instructor. So, at this time, I wish you to go ahead and sign here on this document. So William then picks up a quill and signs the signature to it. Then the Lord Instructor looks to Khaleesi. It is done, my queen. Khaleesi then stands with a somewhat stern look and her eyebrows slightly raised. Though you are my husband and king, following in my stead at my right hand, as I have adopted your heldry, and as I have adopted you to be amongst our people to be permitted to live here, as I hold your sworn allegiance to me, and the love that you have also sworn to me by the symbols, though you were at that time, and she says with a smile, you did not know what you were doing, but I accepted this and approved of it. So shall I also hold you to this document for which you have signed, for it is from this day forward then you are no longer naive of the laws for which I enforce, and as you have heard, I cannot show favoritism should any of the laws that I enforce you break. You do understand this. Yes, my queen. Then with a big smile, you have done well. And this also concludes your lessons of the laws.
So with that, she then takes the document to wherever it is it has to be filed, and then William is excused from the classroom. William comes up to a door where long ago, when he had first came to this world, the palace visionary had his quarters. He stood there for a second, not knowing if he should knock or enter. So he chooses to knock. And he hears someone call him in. Ah, King William. This is highly unusual, but is okay. I would never expect you to come to me. You must have something you wish to ask of me? Yes. I know I'm only human, but... There is something troubling me about whatever is troubling our queen. You know, I did see the vision of the veil passing you, and when she had received the messenger about the, what you have gone through, I confirmed this with the vision I had seen. How are you feeling? Much better now. Um, I feel credit is given, should be given, and I do give it to... Khaleesi freely, that upon feeling the coolness of her hand, because her, well, the people of your world not having the body temperature like me as a human, was symbolically a way of pulling me out of my, what she called the state of sleep. I see. But I have also been told, though I still will not be strong as her or the people of this world, that the strength that I had before of my frailties are going to be doubled now, and that my longevity shall be as about as long as hers. Well, that is good. So, what is it that you wish to ask? For you must be here to confide in wisdom uh, that I may have. Well, I had to postpone one of my classes because I felt it was necessary I had noticed that Khaleesi had some type of different look about her. Is she feeling well? I would imagine. Um, she didn't seem to say much. In my world, the expressions on her face and the look that she had, we would call a state of depression. Well, Targaryens do have some emotions they show, especially when someone close to them has either been killed in battle or uh, by some other means of treachery. Well, I don't think it had anything to do with that. Because the look that she had would be something that I've only seen in my world. It is if she does what we humans would call a blank stare. She could be looking at something, but what we humans call a daydream, or you could be looking at something, but you're seeing a vision of some sort, and yet you're not looking exactly at what it is your eyes are focused on. I see. Targaryens are kind of a unique people. You know this, William. Yes, what you describe is considered not to be a normal emotion for Targaryens. I understand. I, even though it's not required of me, decided to do a little extra, as I call it, research. And I have come to learn some things of Targaryens regarding dragons. You have looked at these parts of the uh, history? Yes. Did I do something wrong? Usually that history is reserved for those who come from the line of Targaryens. For example, if you two should have a child, you would be forbidden to read these things because you are not Targaryen. For it is to be passed on to an heir or 
someone continuing the lineage of Targaryens. So even though you would have a child half human, half Targaryen, only the child may read of these things because it is something that would be passed on as it has been for many generations of the Targaryens. I understand and I apologize if I did something wrong, but I felt it was necessary to view these things that perhaps maybe I might find some answers. Again, I'm only human and I do not know what it is I can do to take away her feeling of what she feels is a loss of power. I'm thinking it's like something of, I don't know, doubt or something. So what did you learn then? Well, I learned that Targaryens were the only ones that were able to ride dragons and that there is much ancient old ancient um, connections between Targaryens and dragons. That is true. So I'm thinking that there must be some connection from what I've read to what she is feeling now. And yet she has three dragons. Yes, there is a connection. Well, can you tell me, from what I've uh, told you a little bit, that could be troubling her? Yes, I see I see a vision now, and I it doesn't though it's not much. I know what it is that may be troubling her. Before you came to our world, William, you must understand. To be born of fire and have dragons is considered the greatest thing ever to happen in this world. This occurred, of course, at the death of her first husband. And she has, uh, for some time, been able to control her dragons. And many people have come to respect this as the power for which she held and with the rightful claim to the throne for which he had entitled. I'm sure she must have told you that she said to when one of the dragons has caused suffering to those who either lost their certain flocks of their field or even a child. I kind of felt something. I don't have the senses that Targaryens do. Well, this is what happened, and she had him chained for a while. Prior to your returning, it would seem that the two dragons, though she could not have catch the third into the special confinement, had kind of returned to what would be considered a normal state of... Um, Acknowledging her presence as the mother. However, since you probably have seen them at one point in time, they did not stay this way. And again, she's had to chain them up. But it's to the point now that even certain fears, which again, are as highly unusual for a Targaryen because their emotions are not like that of yours, of a human, is not considered normal. Targaryens and dragons are pretty much linked together. If this link is broken, it is like for you, being human, or myself, losing a, a member of your body, like a finger or a thumb. I see. There is a way to have her get beyond this, but it could be dangerous. Well, I'll try anything, anything to help her out. I guess you already know she woke the spirit of my dragon in me that she had sensed when I came here. Because my heraldry connects to that of the legend of my world known as King Arthur 
of Camelot who believed in dragons. Yes. Well, what is it that I could do? Because you have a deep love for her, this is good. This is also a very rare opportunity. It cannot just be anyone of this world. It has to be, symbolically, the male dragon guiding the mother of dragons. That is, the chosen mate of, by the mother of dragons guiding its mate through the path of wisdom. This, of course, means walking through a distance of fire. The fire warms the blood, and at the end of the walk, you both have to do a blood mixing ritual. So how is this performed? It involves that while you have your arms around each other, your right hand must be cut and her left hand cut and allowing the blood to mix. The blood must dro drop through onto her heart and at the same time mingle within you two. This would mean you're giving part of that which she woke in you to her and it would revamp her her power to which she will still be loved as the mother of dragons but she will no longer need to depend on them to keep the security of having her rightful claim to the throne. Well then, would I be allowed to, I mean, I, I guess I would be because that means we have to do this. Yes, but there is something that I also must tell you. It is uncertain how Targaryen blood would affect a human because your blood burns bright red and hot and you have I believe said from rumors I've heard that your blood has the element of copper correct yes that is the blood that humans have well tar people of this world and like her being Targaryen they don't have the element of copper in their blood perhaps you, whether you have seen this or not, the blood is much darker than that of a human's. The element could be something like that of iron. It could be poisonous to you. Well, I have sworn my allegiance to her. William thinks for a moment. And I swore at the time I had walked the coals of fire that I will defend our queen. I have also sworn to give her my life if necessary, and if this is what is required, I would be willing to give my life freely just to bring her into the state of her being a Targaryen to get her from the emotions that you said is not considered normal for her her um, her house or race. That is very brave of you, and you do accept these risks. Yes, I love her very much, and I will do anything for her, even if it should cost me my own life. Very well, we should keep this to ourselves, and I will tell you the first step that needs to be done. Then... I will um, let's see here. Hmm. I will go talk to some people. You may have seen them at the time you walked the coals of fire. They would not take too kindly of you showing up because your beliefs and the fact that you are not of this world are much different. They were those who wore robes when you walked the coals of fire. But they will see me because we have a mutual meeting of the minds 
for that which we believe in traditions and ancient customs. Okay. The first step is that since the dragons are not under her control, she has to be willing to set them free. This is part of the first part of the ritual. This also could be dangerous because you would have to, since she is not able to control them herself, risk your life and set them free. Once this is done, then the next part comes of the walking of the path of wisdom. This leads up to the blood mixing ritual. You're sure you're willing to do this? William thinks for a moment again. Yes, I have to do this. I I don't know if I could stand seeing her in such a state. It is as if like someone that she loved very much has died. The type of look on her face. And if what you say is true, this is not a normal emotion for a Targaryen. Then it must be very important that we get this symptom cured. That is true, because it could cause her much problems, perhaps affect her health, and even cause her to eventually be dethroned because she may start to show gaps of judgment or need help in making decisions. Well, I do trust Sansa, who was appointed queen, uh, hand of the queen, I'm sure while we get things prepped that she'll be able to help her. Yes, this will help, but it will not last long if this is not taken care of right away. All right. So I will seek the words of wisdom and if she will do what is necessary, I'm sure that then perhaps maybe she will allow me to do what is needed to be done regarding the two dragons she has. Very well then, I will leave this part in your hands while I take care and set things up for the other part. So with that, William and the palace visionary agree to this and keep this between themselves and only to the queen who is to learn of what the, needs to be done. And so then they part. 